Jesus got a hold of my life. He got a hold of my soul. Yes, Jesus got a hold of my life. And he won't let go. I used to be oh so sad. But now I'm happy and glad. Because Jesus got a hold of my life. He got a hold of my soul. Jesus can get a hold of your life. If you only give him control, yes, Jesus will straighten your life. If you let him and give him control, you used to be oh so sad, but now you can be happy and glad because Jesus got a hold of your life and he won't let you go. No, don't let him go. Oh, no, don't let him go. Well, welcome. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this October 15. October 15. We are whizzing right along in the month here, aren't we? And we are up to chapter 26. Jeremiah, Yarmiyahu, chapter 26. And, oh, this is an action-packed chapter here. I mean, Jeremiah is going to meet headlong with these priests. And it's going to look like all the priests and all the people. They've convinced all the people to be against him. To further harden their hearts from hearing the word of the Lord. So let's you and I be very careful today and take example and say, I'm not going that way. I'm going to keep my heart tender and open to the word of God, even when it hurts, even when you find he's touching that little spot that irritates you that you don't want to have anybody bring up. Maybe it is a situation that happened that caused your heart to break and you are feeling some bitterness but you don't want to own up to that we all go through those situations don't we so after that nice hot sip and then it starts to go cold let's see what we can learn here from jeremiah 26 in the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house. Boy, now we're going to get right down to the bullet's eye of the whole thing. Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command you to speak to them, which is probably the last place they want to see Jeremiah's face. They came to worship. They want to do their own worship. They don't want to hear from him. Thus says the Lord. We came to worship the Lord, but we don't want to hear from him. Right? Do not diminish a word. Boy, that's a strong warning. Perhaps everyone will listen and turn from his evil way, that I may relent concerning the calamity which I propose to bring on them because of the evil of their doings. <clears throat> and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to heed the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent to you, both rising up early and sending them. But you have not heeded. Then I will make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. <clears throat> so the priests, and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it happened when Jeremiah had made an end 
of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people seized him, saying, you will surely die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, this house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah, Yarmiahu, in the house of the Lord. Oh, how devastating. I mean, we can have people against us, but do you want people to stand right in the aisle of the church, the house of the Lord, and speak up and seize you like they're going to throw you out because you spoke a word from the Lord? I mean, put yourself in Jeremiah's shoes. What a heartbreak. What a heartbreak. And when the princes of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord, and they sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. And the priests and the prophets spoke to the princes and all the people, saying, This man deserves to die, for he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your ears. <clears throat> and then Jeremiah spoke to all the priests, princes, and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city with all the words that you have heard. Now therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent concerning the doom that he has pronounced against you, as for me, here I am, in your hand. Do with me as seems good and proper to you. But know for certain that if you put me to death, you will surely bring innocent blood on yourselves, on this city and on its inhabitants. For truly the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. So the princes and all the people said to the priests and to the prophets, this man does not deserve to die. Oh, oh, we've hit a nerve. I mean, we've hit the brain to say, whoo, wait a minute. I might in be in deeper in unbelief than I want to be. He does not deserve to die, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. And then certain of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah of Morasheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah and spoke to all the people of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Zion, or Zion, shall be plowed like a field. Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the mountain of the temple like the bare hills of the forest. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, and all Judah ever put him to death? Did he not fear the Lord and seek the Lord's favor? And the Lord relented concerning the doom which he had pronounced against them. But we are doing great evil against ourselves. Now there was also a man who prophesied in the name of the Lord, Uriah, the son of Shemaniah of Kiriah, Jeraim, who prophesied against this city and against this land, according to all the words of Jeremiah. And we, when Jehoiakim the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went to Egypt. And then Jehoiakim the king 
sent men to Egypt. Elnatan, the son of Achbor, and other men who went with him to Egypt, and they brought Uriah from Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim the king, who killed him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. <clears throat> so our God intervenes, doesn't he? Intervenes. The holy fear of him came upon a few that turned the tide. And we move right along to chapter 27, 27 of Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourselves bonds and yokes, and put them on your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the Ammonites, the king of Tyre, and the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messengers who come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and command them to say to their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are on the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field I have also given him to serve him. So all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the time of his land comes. And then many nations and great kings shall make him serve them. And it shall be that the nation and the kingdom which will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, under the nation I will, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with the sword, with famine, and the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore, do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, or your sorcerers who speak to you saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you to remove you far from your land and I will drive you out and you will perish. But the nations that bring their necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, <clears throat> I will let them remain in their own land, says the Lord, and they shall till it. They shall till it and dwell in it. When the people till the land and plant, they settle down, don't they? and wait for the crop. I also spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence? as the Lord has spoken against this nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. Therefore, do not listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you, saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. 
for I have not sent them, says the Lord. Yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I may drive you out and that you may perish, you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Also I spoke to the priests and to all this people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Do not listen to the words of your prophets who prophesy to you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house will now shortly be brought back from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Why should this city be laid waste? But if they are prophets and if the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem do not go to Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, concerning the carts, and concerning the remainder of the vessels that remain in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take. When he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem, yes, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem, they shall be carried to Babylon, and there they shall be until the day that I visit them, says the Lord. Then I will bring them up and restore them to this place. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> and so we can say, what can we learn from all that? Well, well, it's very clear. To obey the Lord. And then we won't have to go through all that. But look what America is going through. Look what the other nations of the world. It's not just America. Everybody focuses their eyes on us and blames us for the whole bit. And don't get me wrong, we're, we're to be blamed. But so are many other nations. This is an end time happening, isn't it? All right, we let go of that, although you don't have to. You can read on. It's your Bible. You are free. And I hope that your appetite and your interest is enticed and brought firm that you want to say, yes, what happens next? I need to read on. I want to know what happens next. Whole point of reading. All right, we move right along to the New Covenant, the New Testament, and we are in 2 Thessalonians. Oh, such a wonderful little epistle. We are in chapter 3 today. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Finally, Paul says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Satan himself, the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. But we command you, brethren, 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Oh, that would be a wonderful thing to bring back today, wouldn't it? We had to have billboards along the countryside and in the cities that declare that. <laughs> For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. Not always asking for a handout when you are healthy and perfectly capable of working. We got a whole bunch of young people. They're just lazy and, and they're getting social security money. Come on y'all. That was established for old people like me. See how we've let things get out of hand. We need to be praying about all these things. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Oh boy, that needs to be a bumper sticker. That needs to be one you can write on the refrigerator in the bathroom mirror. Do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle. So I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Oh, wow. What a beautiful letter. And tomorrow, Lord willing, that we're here, <clears throat> we will read 1 Timothy. We will begin 1 Tim. How exciting. All right, we move right along to Psalm 85. Psalm 85, this is a psalm of the sons of Korah, given to the chief musician. And obviously, beautiful music was written for these words. Sometimes I think, well, <clears throat> why don't I, why don't I write a tune and surprise them and sing it? <laughs> but that hasn't happened. Let's just stick with God's word. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. We are watching that, aren't we? They are returning to Israel. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. Selah. Meditate. Worship the Lord. 
prostrate yourself. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O oh God. There's that beautiful word again. Restore. Repent. Restore. Rebuild. There's, there's just a whole bunch of them. And it starts with R-E. It's good. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again? Another good word that starts with R-E, revive us again. That your people may rejoice in you. Another one, rejoice. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him that glory may dwell in our land. Oh, this next line is so beautiful. <clears throat> Mercy and truth have met together. Isn't that beautiful? Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Isn't that beautiful? His footsteps are your pathway and mine. Oh, what a life-giving psalm, Psalm 85. And we wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 25, verse 16. Proverbs 25, 16. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. That's quite a warning, isn't it? Don't overeat sweets and make yourself sick. Only eat as much as you need. And it's good, isn't it? Gives you energy. <clears throat> it's sweet. I like honey on a piece of toast. Some butter and then the honey. Mm -mm -mm. Haven't had that for a while. Well, y'all. Let's go to prayer, and we all have prayer requests, don't we? Nationally, requests worldwide, requests for leaders, requests for the church, requests for today's prophets, today's ministers and priests. Today's body of Christ needs to get stronger and stronger and bolder and bolder older and get the gospel out there well, we're doing our little bit aren't we we are and i my heart is so rejoicing to look and and see all your names wonderful friends coming and supporting uh, i just bless you in the name of jesus <clears throat> i do have two prayer requests I'm leaving for Ohio this morning, and I will continue the reading from Ohio. I've done it before in this little condo. You've seen me, or wherever. <laughs> Sometimes I've done it in a hotel lobby. Sometimes I've done it in the parking lot. <laughs> Sometimes sitting right there at Frisch's boldly in a corner, trying not to be obnoxious. But I'm flying, Sammy and I, <coughs> my brother Bob, <clears throat> my only close relative uh, that's still living <clears throat> is in the hospital in Toledo. And um, he was at an art class. 
and he just fell off the chair, fainted on the floor. And uh, so they are examining many things. He's over now on a heart unit side at St. Vincent's Hospital. And I'm very um, glad to know that there's a thorough examination going on. I'm asking you to pray, please, for Bob, my brother. And he's pretty excited that, that we're coming. And I want to be there with him. So we're going to stay a while. And I hope to see you people who are in the Portland area. Miss Kathy, I will, we will meet. And um, then I'd ask you to pray for us to have a safe flight. And, um, and any other ministry that the Lord might have in mind in Ohio. Yes, I want to see our little town set on fire with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. So sometimes Sammy and I will be eating lunch at my kids' restaurant there, right there on Madison Street, um, <clears throat> the Brick House, and um, love to meet you there for a lunch. Text me, my phone number, or on here, and we'll see if we can't meet up. Going to be there till the 24th, fly back the 24th. I want to be there to be with my <clears throat> brother Bob when he gets out of the hospital and uh, needs help getting strong again and so forth. Thank you very much. Father God, we bless you for this beautiful day. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you for this word today, so rich so filled with many, many lessons, many encouragements, blessing us, Lord, giving many answers, perhaps, to situations you've been praying and saying, God, please show me. Maybe the answer you needed was in this word today. I pray it is. Father, we start off at the top and we, we say, let peace be in Jerusalem, your precious city. Peace in Jerusalem. Let every rocket, every brick, anything they try to destroy these enemies, let it fail, Lord. Let their arms and their hands grow limp and they don't have the strength to do the evil we bind it we come against it in jesus mighty name jesus mighty name and lord we are believing that all of your will for your people will happen today please lord let peace reign in israel and jerusalem for this wonderful feast of tabernacles season people have been spending awesome time in their little sukkahs that they make. And that just infuriates Satan, so it's no surprise. But Lord, I'm asking that the people hang on to the blessings that they have had with the closeness of their families and celebrating you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, <clears throat> I pray for the heads of nations. I pray for the heads of nations. I pray for Ukraine and Russia and China. I pray for India, Lord. I pray for America. I pray, Lord, that your will will be accomplished and that those who are in high offices in America who are not anointed by you and who got there by fraud, F-R-A-U-D, fraud, and know it, and some of them even say it, cockily like they can. Father God, we're asking, <clears throat> that you remove them, that you change their hearts, that you draw them unto you, 
Please, Lord. Please. Because we know, Lord, those who you call and call and call and refuse to come, you have said the final end of that person, you will give them a reprobate mind. And I'm not so sure some of them aren't walking in that now. <clears throat> As we see the things they are saying. Father God, we pray earnestly. I know your desire and our desire is that all would come to salvation. All would come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he suffered and what he purchased in victory for you. Please, Lord, turn the hardest of heart today. Once we were far from you, and you sent Holy Ghost to work on us until we had a born-again experience and are walking in the footsteps that we read today, walking in the footsteps of the Lord. Please, Lord, hear all the cries of all the brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters right now who are lifting up children, parents, friends, loved ones. They are lifting up enemies. They are lifting up situations that they wish they could resolve. They are lifting up situations, Lord, to you of, of having a better job, having some more money to live on, getting prepared for the cold of winter in the northern areas. Precious God, many things. Preparing for the holidays. Father God, please, please, don't cast us away, but hear our prayers and we bow and humble our hearts before you that you might forgive us and wash us clean with your precious blood. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. You are our Lord. You are our mighty king. You are the soon coming king of the entire world for all eternity. Precious Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only begotten son of God, the living God, the only living God. Oh, we are looking for you to return, Lord. We are looking up for we know you are returning in the clouds and we are excited. Father God, we want to walk and live in you. Help us, Holy Spirit. And all of God's people cried a hearty, Amen. And went to work, went about whatever job. Please know that the Lord loves you. He counted all the hairs on your head when you brushed them this morning. He loves every detail about you. He's crazy in love with you. That he gave his life, his very own blood, just for you. Go with that comfort in your heart, with that knowledge that you are a chosen son. You are a, you are a magnificent chosen lady a daughter of the Most High King. Walk in that joy and that assurance and share it when you can. Love you all. Bye-bye.